the S&P could put on 10, 11% very quickly. You know, you just got done saying that, yeah, we might have a short-term rally for a little, but you're still expecting new lows for the quarter or t- for the next quarter or two. What, what what should we watch out for? It sounds like a volatile roller coaster of a ride. So like what 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 are some like tips that you have for just the average investor out there to what to watch out for in 2023 as a whole? Absolutely. I think there's a real good question on that in this case, Aaron. I think everybody should know one thing. Look, everybody came into this year with the anticipation of lower prices, myself included. But we all must hold ourselves open to the concept that the market tends to go in the travel least the travel in the direction least expected the mm. expectations overwhelmingly are lower that the data is going to come out worse and then it'll force the fed to keep the brakes on and continue to raise rates that is the overwhelming thoughts coming into 2023 and you can see it if you watch the various news channels of the of the pundits pointing at that the recession isn't here yet because the data hasn't caught up to the market. And again, the market being eternally optimistic and earlier um, movement of money has caused a little bit of a rally early on this year. I mean, a few percent is all. Mm-hmm. However, that being said, the markets have a way to creep higher and then leap higher subsequently. Their creepers become leapers. Maybe people have heard of this. The reason why we have to follow math, everybody, is because math will make the signal that we don't want to believe. The the signal we don't want to believe is that the market will go a little lower so we could buy it cheaper. But what could happen is the market may, for some reason, and it often does, portend and point to future prices. Remember, it is a forward pricing mechanism. And the expectation being so overwhelmingly to go lower in price this year could be met with the outside, with the chance that, hey, you know what? The market does what people least expected, and it actually goes higher. And then that changes all of our conversation. So the recommendation is, is when people overwhelmingly think things are bad, tells me to be very careful about getting too caught up into that talk and not into the data. And right now the data is bad, but that doesn't mean that the future data is going to give you the information that supports our current thought, which is the market goes lower. So the main thing is, is you have to understand that the market, if it goes in the direction least anticipated, it will go higher. And if if this is the case, you know, we will be long the market. So bottom line, don't follow the crowd mm-hmm. is number one. Another thing I could tell you is this. <clears throat> no bull market ever started without a cut in interest rates. There are no cuts planned. The best that happens from the Fed and the market will interpret positively, is guess what? They don't raise rates at the next meeting. If they don't raise rates and they feel that their 4.5% is enough, they may stop for a couple of months. And if they stop for a couple of months, the market certainly is going to say, think that that's a very positive thing. And maybe they'll start thinking they will cut. And they, even if they won't, they'll think that way. And if they think that way, the market goes higher. That's how the market can move against what, you're, what most of the data says shortly, short on. And then the data catches up to it and supports the bull move. So bottom line, don't get caught up in all the noise of the market and the bearishness or the bullishness. That's number one. Number two is case like this, when we don't have much money invested, you have to take signals because at the very worst, even if we get along, most portfolios would only go from having um, cash positions of all the way up as high as 80% or more. They would go to cash positions of only 40%. 
which means that if the market starts to go higher, at least we have some of the money in, and then you can catch up later if this turns out to be the lows of the year. So the second thing is we have to have some investment when the data is spurious and it, we're in an inflection point, which is what I said we were in. So one, don't always follow the crowd. Two, make sure you have to have something in there when the data is spurious and we're not sure if it's true or false that the market up or down. Too many people right now are thinking it's going down. That means the data is starting to be mixed when the market is actually pricing itself a little bit higher. It'd be actually a very good entry point if we could be in here and my forecasts are wrong. They are. My forecasts and interest rates start to decline throughout the year. Inflation starts to mitigate quite a bit in the next few months. And off to the races, the S&P could put on 10, 11% very quickly and move all the way up to say 4,200, uh, 4,300. In which case, I think all of us would be very happy to own the market um, right where we are now and see it put on 10, 11%. So that's the reason why we follow these kind of ideas and rules of the market and, and not follow the crowd. We follow the rules. Yeah, we have someone um, in the chat saying, uh, you, he likes your phrasing of a nervous long. And uh, I think that's very apropos for this at this time of the year where it seems like it's January. It's typically a, a very optimistic month um, to a start to a new year and everything. But we did also discuss last time with the, what we were forecasting. So it's a very nervous long. That's kind of like the theme of the day. I like that. I like that phrasing. And so does uh, so does Brian over here.